Chapter 1061 is in the books. Things a little bit. It wasn't an action chapter, you know? There was some action, but, you know, it wasn't really like the one that really gets your blood flowing. This one was more like a surprise. Let's get it. So now the talk of the town is Dr. Vegapunk. They say the O2 on her clothing, so it's not real Dr. Vegapunk. We Bonnie's not interacting with Luffy. She says she has some business. We see a shark with emotion. There's a lot. There's a lot going on, but at the same time, it's like... It puts right in line with what we actually want with the story. All right. So in this chapter, not only do we start off with a beautiful cover story, we got to see the German Double Six sibling escaping with Caesar from Hoke Cake Island. And Miss Katakuri and Oven, they're out of there. An interesting part about this is now... We know Caesar is with Judge. Judge and Caesar, they're not too different, you know? They're trying to manipulate and compensate for one Dr. Vegapunk. But as the chapter, it's not just Vegapunk. We're calling her Vega Mommy, because damn. So now, here we are in the crossroads of a new worst generation member being introduced to the crew. See, she saved one Zoro from causing an admiral to come to Sabaody, but one came anyway. Part of the West Generation with Luffy escaped from the world government not once but twice. Last time we saw her, she was with Sabo on Marijuana. Well, not with Sabo, but in the same area. Now here she is, after the events of the reverie, going to see Dr. Vegapunk. The introduction to the Seraphim. Kuma being saved. Kuma still not really having all of it up there. So now we have Jubi Bonnie, one warlord, not warlord, worst generation that's connected to everything. So what is she gonna do for the story? And what are the implications with her being Dr. Vegapunk, Dr. Vegapunk being a girl, Dr. Vegapunk having the O2 on their chest? A lot of interesting questions popping up right now, and a lot of people have answers, but I don't think it's that simple. You see, Oda likes to play games, likes to move pieces around, but looking one way and then yeah. Back doors is another. Kobe, Dr. Vegapunk, Jury Bonnie. These are all names I feel like are gonna sort of shift the tide of everything going on right now. They showed us the same kids that Punk has, and they showed us he's in the beginning. They showed us a shark with emotions, and they showed us people who had no emotions on the cover store. You see, a lot of pieces moving around. So where are we gonna look? What do they have to talk about? What kind of questions can we get answers for? Chapter 1061, the island of the future. Dr. Vegapunk introduced Jubi Bonnie. Here you go. We move to the final saga of One Piece. Let's get it. Honestly speaking, with this chapter, a lot had happened. And there's a lot that happened with not a lot happening. This is what I'm trying to say. So I guess we got the straw hats all being separated. I'm, I'm, I'm more curious as to why it's separated the way it is, right? So now I'm over here looking at the fact that we get, where is it? Where is it? We get Jewelry Bonnie, Luffy, Chopper, and Jinbei. All right? So there has to be a reason why those four specifically got separated. 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 Then we got the introduction to Vice, uh, Vice Admiral Dahl. Or, yeah, Vice Admiral Dahl. She's fire. I ain't gonna lie, bro. That's the aesthetic. If you know, you know. If you don't, you'll get there. <laughs> but Dahl, but we also got introduced to... Dr. Vegapunk, and we know Drew Bonnie's actually headed there for Dr. Vegapunk. So the, the strides being separated is really interesting to me because the people who you would think need to see Dr. Vegapunk first aren't the ones that are actually going to interact with Dr. Vegapunk. So we have, and I actually want to go back to the last chapter because I keep forgetting, but I don't know if they know Caribou's in the barrel. Because if they don't, then that's sort of like, I, when I read it, I felt like they know he was in there and they were just keeping him in there. But now I'm starting to think that he may be in there and I've snuck in there. But I'll go back and read that chapter in a second. So having Caribou and actually showing Caribou's face alongside Usopp, Zoro, Nami, Frankie, Robin, Brooke, and Sanji, it makes things really interesting because now we have two people who may have ties to Dr. Vegapunk. We have Frankie, 
reading their notes, and Sanji, who's a mecha human. All right. And Robin being there as well is going to imply more um, of a uh, history lesson to us. More or less, maybe Robin knowing, wanting to know the true history of the world is going to talk more about Devil Fruits because Dr. Fagabong has the most extensive knowledge when it comes to that. And it may even help Nambi out with her climate attack and may help Usa out with um, his gear. And then it leaves Zoro. And when you look at it, you have Frankie, Nami, Usopp, and Caribou. They're all with lighted panels. Then you have Zoro now with like the dark panel uh, over him. Because even Nami, it's Zoro and Robin actually. And then Brooke and Sanji. So that means to me that something's going to happen with Robin and Zoro. That sort of like takes him away from this group. And this group completely splits. So then that leaves Usopp, Frankie, and Nami, and Sanji, which are the four people who would get something from Dr. Vegapunk. Like Sanji being a mecha human, uh, Frankie reading the notes, Nami the climate attack, and Usopp with his stuff. And it's just interesting that those two panels are darked out. I just wanted to mention that. So, and then you also have Dr. Vegapunk darked out as well, but then you guys can see her face lit, lit up. But it's all sort of interesting, sort of like guiding the people who are going to be together. We have Zoro, Robin, and then Dr. Vegapunk all like shaded out. So that's that. But also have the robot, but so you can make implications that the robot's going to be like a, a base for them. But something someone else pointed out to me was that this uh, Vega Force 4 or Vega Force 1 12 looks exactly like Frankie, right? It looks exactly like Frankie in the wrong timeline when he's 40. And then we go all the way back to the beginning, right? We see the Sonny's face depicted. And then we see a shark, uh, where is it, where is it? The shark mecha, uh, the shark mecha having like a personality of his own, not being able to uh, to subs uh, subdue the primal, uh, primal urges, I think it was called, they said. And then when you look at this, I, I think this uh, Navy Force 1, I don't think that's Vegapunk's eyes either. I think that's like the robots itself and like Vegapunk sort of like just controlling it. So that leaves like room for Sunny being like a sentient thing and then we look at frankie after the bohawk one when frankie's like after that so you have the uh, basically frankie looking like this when he's 40 and then after that it's frankie becoming a ship and I just like how they're showing sunny twice and frankie's uh bounty poster was the actual sunny so i don't know if that's like raising like like clues about what's going to happen and then we also get Juby bonnie someone who could actually manipulate ages we make it a situation where we get to see the straw hats in like their terrible their terrible timeline because we actually don't know Juby bonnie's power like the only thing we know right now is that uh she can make you turn into a baby and she can sort of age people we don't, i think she only no she can age people like either younger or older so maybe she can also like alter the type of person you're going to turn into maybe it's not just like strictly aging maybe she can like make you older to when you're like your bones are brittle instead of like you just being older so like maybe there's like a way to like sort of direct the type of person you may be or the, the type of time you're going to follow and the reason why i mentioned that too is because if you show we're seeing now two indications of frankie uh on the sbs with order just drawing the the straw hats in different timelines but then you also get the seraphims coming back and being uh shown as the kids of the warlords so now these are two things from the sbs that involves like ages that Oda or ages or timelines that Oda has brought into the story in the last two chapters, the Seraphims and now Frankie. So I, I find it interesting that we're introduced to Julie Bonnie right now because we may actually see something involving that. And the fact that Julie Bonnie has to go and talk to Dr. Vegapunk or has some business with Dr. Vegapunk, it leaves a lot of things up in the air. Like, what are they actually going to talk about? It's like, is it Julie Bonnie talking about Kuma? Because the whole situation with Kuma, like, I think Julie Bonnie was the one that tried to kill St. Charles. And if that's the case, then she's really pissed off about having Makuma and Dr. Vegapunk is basically the person that did it to him. And it could be a situation where they're going to make a business deal. Like, you help me, I help you. Like, if you help me with my seraphims and get making them older to be, like, the perfect weapon, uh, could you... Uh, I'll restore Kuma's memory. Like, maybe, like, Vegapunk is good, but at the same time, Vegapunk really isn't. Maybe Vegapunk's just lying in order to use Julie Bonnie's power. And it's not... It wouldn't be the first time that we've seen, like, a doctor, like, do things that, like, are heinous. Like, we've seen Dr. Hogback, and we also have seen Caesar. So, and then we've seen Judge, and we've seen Queen. Like, Dr. Vegapunk helping the strike that one time really isn't going to, like, make it seem that, make it, uh, really doesn't make it seem that Vegapunk's, like, really, like, a good person. And then, like, you capital, uh, you sort of, like, hammered home because you said, forgive me, but did you say saved you? Oh, you naive pirate. So, it's almost like Dr. Vegapunk still has, like, this, this, um, perspective on pirates. Maybe it might be good or bad, depending on, because it could be her just being sarcastic. But she said, I work for the government despite my mediocrity. And the mediocrity comes more from the, the fact that every time we've talked about Dr. Vegapunk, it's like some of his things succeeding and most of them failing. 
right? Like we had the, uh, the Sea Stone ships, they succeed. We have the Pacifista, they were a success, basically. But we have the Delphi and Momonosuke being a failure. Now you have the Shark ship also being a failure. So now we have all this, like, we're starting to sort of build a picture of what Dr. Vegapunk is, but like at the same time, Oda gave it to us in a cute face. So now it's like, okay, like, how are we actually going to judge, uh, judge Dr. Vegapunk? Because Dr. Vegapunk could be like another pudding, like cute face, but like, you know, much different on the, on the inside, right? She puts a smile on your face, but at the same time, she's like trying to like advance her studies more than anything. And I think Robin having the knowledge that she has, it really, she may have a pony glyph in there and like, and she needs Robin to read it. Like who knows, man? So there's a lot of things to talk about and a lot of things we can't talk about. All right. But we mentioned the straw has splitting up. So we have, like I mentioned, you have the four people that are, are or five people who are all like whited, the whited panels. You have Caribou, Usopp, Nyam, uh, Caribou, Usopp, Nami, Frankie, and Sanji. Then you have the three who are darked out. Oh, but you have Brooke too. Sorry, sorry, Brooke. Sorry, Brooke. Then you have the, uh, the three people who are darked out in the panels. You have Zoro, Robin, and then Dr. Vegapunk. So maybe a situation where they all split up. Because essentially, the people, like I said, who would gain something from Dr. Vegapunk is maybe Caribou getting like some technology being able to escape. Yes, Usopp with his uh with his gear, Nami with her climate attack, Frankie, Red Doctor from Vegapunk's notes, Sanji being a mecha human, and Brooke I don't know, Brooke getting like <laughs> Brooke Brooke uh, Brooke actually being a soul and that may play la- may play to re- may play in the story later on. So I'll just leave that in the air but like maybe like Brooke can like take over something because it looked like these these things have souls. So Brooke may be able to manipulate them in some way, shape or form. Don't quote me on that though. But then we have like Jimbe, uh, Jimmy Luffy, Jimbe, Luffy, Dewey, Bonnie, and Chopper. So like, why is this split like this? Is the bigger question because I think they said they're on, um, they're on Egghead Island, Egghead Island, right? But then we also got to see Sword, and I think because we saw Sword up here, and then Luffy and them down here, we may get a situation where, um they interact and then Dr. Vegapunk and the bottom interact. So we see Prince Gruss, we see Helmeppo, we see Kibiri, and then we see Doll, wait, Doll, yeah, Doll as well, Tashigi, and the kids. So I feel as though the person that would interact with them and be like the most like, uh, how do you say it? Interact with them and actually be willing to help them would be Luffy and Kobe. But this is where it's interesting because Zoro just talked about um Zoro just talked about um making these people they they chose their path like make them decide their own journey of, like experience their own journey and if they really need help they'll go save them. So with Vivi they have no leads, right? And even though Kobe is a marine, right? Would Luffy actually go and save him? And I'm starting to feel the vibe that he I think he would because he actually knows where Kobe is. And the reason why I think that Luffy would save him is because of Luffy's dream. And I like that Oda introduced it before this arc started. So shout out Par, shout out Siv. But basically, they describe Luffy's dream as pirates and Marines and like revolutions all being able to be friends. And I didn't really, I wasn't able to watch the whole video, but I thought I saw it in the comments and someone said basically everyone being a pirate, basically everyone being free to cho- be able to choose what they want to choose, right? So if that's the case, one step forward, to, one step closer to that is one Luffy becoming Pirate King, but also building or mending a relationship with Marines. And it could be a situation where we get Garp also going to Hachinoso because if they know where they're headed, and we know Garp, I know Garp is training Kobe, but I don't think they're just going to leave Kobe by himself because Helmet was already asking, uh, asking them to go and um, with Seraphim, like which is like one of the highest military power right now. To go and save them, and and they said, and Gruss said, "Are you crazy? Both of you calm down. At the moment, we can't get a hold of Drake either. We're in no position to act right now. Is that clear? So basically, they they're losing. They lost two sword members, and they already dispatched. They're already like uh separated from the Marines, so they really can't act like the Marines themselves for help. So like right now, it was almost describing it as like a sword like thing to to a sword thing that needs to be done or dealt with. So with Kobe being gone, it doesn't just put a strain on the Marines, but also sword themselves because Kobe's a person with information. But then you have also Tashigi talking. I can't remember if Tashigi's in sword. I can't remember. I don't think she is. But Tashigi's basically saying, I'm worried about Kobe too. She's a junior, after, uh, junior, uh, he's a junior Marine after all. He's out junior as a Marine. So essentially, I can't understand if they're making this a sword issue or it's like a really big marine issue because Tashigi's already a king person, so her wanting to save Kobe makes sense. Helmeppo and them being a part of Sora, them wanting to go save, save Kobe, it makes sense. But like Doll seemed really like it didn't really matter. Like I'm, it's that pest Helmeppo. Can you do something about him? Like she seemed that she really didn't care, and that's what like the personality I'm getting from her. So like I don't really mind too much, but at the same time, like 
it's more or less it's more or less like making it feel like it's not just like a big issue to a lot of people only to a certain amount of people and that's why i think garp may get involved because garp you know is like really the, the one looking over kobe watching over kobe and if luffy goes there as well i mean then now we have interaction with garp and luffy versus blackbeard and we may get a situation where Ak- akainu may be involved in some way shape or form I don't know about that one, but at the same time, this, I think this is where Garp dies. Like, I think Garp is gonna, probably going to die in Hachinosu, and I sort of think Luffy's going to be there with him. I know that's a stretch. It's a stretch, but I just feel as though, like, maybe not Garp dying, but I think Garp is going to try to go save Kobe, and Luffy just makes sense that if he finds out about Kobe, he may decide to go and save Kobe, you know? But I, it's neither here nor there because how, why is Julie Bonnie with them, and that sort of, like, leaves things, like, you know? And I think Chopper has to learn a little bit, little bit from Dr. Vegapunk before he leaves, so... I don't know. It's interesting. It's very interesting, honestly. I don't think they, I don't think Luffy's gonna go for Kobe, but it'll be interesting if he did. I'm just really interested to see what this group means. And then Jinbei, uh, Chopper, Bonnie, and then Luffy. I think Bonnie and U- Chopper are gonna play a factor involving Daryl Fruits in some way, shape, or form. I actually think Julie Bonnie may even age Chopper. I just want to see an older Chopper, right? Like Chopper, like as like a like Chopper's like 19 with Luffy. You know what I'm saying? And then Jinbei being there as well, you may get to see a younger Jinbei, like even though that's up in there too, or maybe even older Luffy, but. Besides, like, all that headcanon stuff, I think Chopper and Bonnie are sort of involved with Darafus, or at least the Seraphims in some way, shape, or form. And Jinbei being there, I, I think Jinbei may interact with his Seraphim. And it would be interesting if he did, because I think Jinbei's Seraphim is probably going to be the most interesting one out of all of them. Because I don't, like, I remember mentioning it in my last video, but I don't think that they're going to make a, a Lunarian Fishman, because it would be, like, sort of counterintuitive. They might, and there's no, there's no, like, saying there's a cap on how many different kinds you can make. You can make a, probably a, a Fishman slash Seraphim. But then I also think you're going to get like a Fishman slash Oni. And how like, because essentially a Fishman and a Lunarin, they sort of like counterintuitive because Fishmen are stronger in water and Lunarins basically stronger when their flames are on. So one without the other is sort of like, eh. But you can make the perfect hybrid if you give Jinbei like Lunarian DNA because essentially then they could be decent. And yeah, actually it could work out, but. I was saying maybe you get a fishman slash an oni, and with this one at the very bottom of the, like I said, at the very bottom of the chapter, she's saying that it was a failure because, uh, where, where is it? Where is it? Perhaps uh, uh, overriding the primal desire is something impossible. It's simply impossible. So if maybe the seraphims are the same way, maybe you can't really control the emotions of what they really do, but you can give them orders and they listen, but at the same time, not all the time. They may like act on their own, and then you get a fishman who's innate who's innate like DNA is like like opposing humans obviously Jimmy loves them but like at the same time like it may be different right their primal rage like they're, they're how they really feel about people is like what they're trying to suppress and override so fishmen themselves are like almost programmed to like dislike humans right and then you get onis who are the same way so now you're basically creating this hybrid like race that literally despises humans like more than like celestial dragons despise people look down on people so now I think that what Jinbei may play a factor with, or Jinbei may be like Luffy's ride. Like Jinbei literally may be like Luffy may oh Jinbei, bring me to Blackbeard. We're going for the smoke. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I don't know. There's a lot that could actually happen. And, and Luffy's like, Chopper, Bonnie, you guys go like Chopper, you stay with Bonnie and you go find the rest of the crew. Me and Jinbei are gonna go handle this. Cause Luffy's a Yonko. Like now Luffy can like like Luffy's a Yonko and Jinbei's probably like the one smart person. Now Luffy can like literally move throughout the sea without like having too much problems. And like if Luffy remembers who Dr. Vegapunk was, the person who saved the ship, I think Luffy might be more trusting of Dr. Vegapunk than he should have been and allows Chopper and Bonnie to go off. But, you know, it's like a lot. It's like, I'm really interested to see why this split up happened. And I think if Luffy was with Zoro and Sanji them, then then Zoro and Sanji would also go with Luffy. And I think that might be overkill. And that's why Oda's like, Luffy goes off on his little journey by himself with, with Jinbei and Chopper reunites with the rest of the Straw Hats with Bonnie. But then we get the other split with Usopp, the other split with, uh, where is it? Oh, shit. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? We get the other split with uh dang, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? We get maybe we, maybe we get caribou like maybe it's split like this. We get caribou Usopp by themselves, Zoro by him, Zoro and Robin together, Nami, Frankie, Sanji, and Jinbei by themselves. Like, who knows? But I think it's gonna be this five, like these six, like uh caribou, Usopp, Nami, Frankie, Sanji, and then Jinbei. They're by themselves. Zoro's uh Zoro, Robin, and Dr. Fake they're by themselves. I don't know, and things like happen, you know. It gets it gets it gets crazy. But then Luffy and Jinbei go off on their own adventure and Chopper and Bonnie we reunite with everyone else. I don't know. I don't know. I just feel a little that's how it's sort of flowing. I, I really I was paying attention more to how they were split rather than the rest of the story. Tashigi was nice to see, the kids were nice to see, doll, hubba hubba. Uh sword, I think this is pretty interesting how they're talking about the seraphims and sword and then more or less we can see more off sword. And then I think the, if you go over some of the cover pages like when uh like uh beige's cover pages, you get to see like the Prince Gruss and them 
they were part of the Marines, but they didn't know they were part of Sword at the time until now. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think a lot of this is going to play with Frankie and the fact that Frankie, Bonnie, and then the timelines being shifted or something like that. Or, like, the fact that Frankie is now with Dr. Vegapunk and then we see, like, literally those ships with sentient beings and we have ships with, like, sentient personalities and then we actually have the Sunny being shown right here. And then the Sunny, we got Sunny reacting to Luffy's dream. And then the, the, t the time before that, we got... um. We got Sunny being Frankie's Bonnie Pulitzer. So, like, now it's like, it's just showing that something's going to happen with Sunny. Then you also see him from Red. I haven't seen it yet, but then we get to see, like, Sunny in, like, a kid form, I think. So that could also play. I don't really know what happened yet. So I don't know what to talk about, but that could also be a, a, another clue. So, a lot. There's a lot. Like I said, I'm more interested to see how they split rather than anything else and what happened because it's we're split like this. And I think this is sort of indicating how it's going to go down. So, but tell me what you guys think. Tell me what you guys think. Well, like I said, that maybe. Like I say at the end of every single video, if you like, hit the subscribe button and the bell button to come back next time and remain enlightened, y'all. Leave a comment down below and tell me what you guys think is going to happen with the crew being split. And until next time, get right, don't get left, and remain polished, y'all. Peace. Thank you guys for watching to the end of the video. But while I was talking to stream, a couple other topics came up and I discussed them. And it sort of racked my brain around them a little bit. So Chapter 1061 actually had all these questions. So I decided to give some answers. Check it out. What is happening? Dr. Vegapunk has been perfecting everything. All right, all right, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, hear me, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Sanji was deemed the failure of his family, but later on basically becomes like the strongest, even without the raid suit, being able to even take on some of the properties of the raid suit without the raid suit. And Sanji was the only failure. And then Dr. Vegapunk always deems things, every time we heard about Dr. Vegapunk talking, it's always, this is a failure, right? And it could be a situation where Dr. Vegapunk is supposed to be surpassing Queen, Judge, Caesar, like Dr. Vegapunk is supposed to be the pinnacle, right? Yes, it's going to help Frankie, but if Dr. Vegapunk also, knowing the lineage factor, may do something with Sanji. Maybe Sanji, like, wants to suppress, like, everything from his family. I doubt it. At this, at this point, I think he accepted the power and realized he's not changing. But what if the failure, failure, right, that everyone's talking about finally becomes, like, the perfect product because of Dr. Vegapunk, right? Like, now we have... Dr. Vegapunk, who's crossed DNAs with Lunarians, Fishmen, Onis, probably literally knows the lineage factor of, of humans, obviously, knows how to control Delph Roots. Sanji, his brother, basically gaining powers like they are Delph Root users without actually having eaten one. Dr. Vegapunk being able to uh, possibly cure the smiles. Dr. Vegapunk is actually curing uh, Caesar's uh, misdoings. So at this point, like we have Dr. Vegapunk being able to possibly solve everything and take everything a step further. So why not turn the one thing that's a failure because Judge was working on it and give it to and give it to Dr. Vegapunk. Now imagine, imagine, right? Look at this, look at this panel side by side. It says, perhaps overriding primal desires is simply impossible, right? This is that their innate desires, right? And to make Sanji better would be to, obviously m many people would not, probably not like it, but maybe people, a lot of people would, but controlling that very urge, like, you know how Sanji every time he sees a woman, at Sanji, right? But imagine being able to suppress that down to like a minimum, right? Obviously, that might ruin Sanji's character, but at the same time, if it was able to, if that, it was possible, then wouldn't that make Sanji sort of stronger? That would like, sort of like eliminate his weakness. Maybe not him hitting a woman, right? But him not having to like lust over her, right? The primal desires are simply impossible. Perhaps. And they see Sanji right next to it. Sanji's obviously going to hard eyes Dr. Vegapunk. So, you know, it's like, it's going to happen. So, that's a thought. So, maybe Sanji conquer Saki? Maybe. Maybe it is one of Dr. Vegapunk's. Maybe the reason why Dr. Vegapunk's so good is because Dr. Vegapunk can split into multiple personalities. You know, like, so, um, I forgot. So, if you ever, ever watch, like, Isekai's or, like, Power Fantasy or Power Fantasy, um, anything, right? And how, basically, the smartest beings are usually ones that have, like, called something called, like, parallel thinking or, like, a supercomputer within their head. So, like, imagine now, now like, maybe Dr. Vegapunk literally ate, maybe Dr. Vegapunk really did eat a devil fruit, right? And the reason why Dr. Vegapunk is, the reason why Dr. Vegapunk can, um, can, uh, what do you call it? The reason why Dr. Vegapunk is so smart is because he has five personalities that are all, like, maybe Dr. Vegapunk ate a devil fruit has five personalities, right? So, like, Dr. Vegapunk split into five, and then it's, like, probably the five categories. So, like, one's, like, uh, since less than 2005, I appreciate that, man. Appreciate you, bro. So Dr. Vegapunk now has like a mind that's like strictly focused on like cybernetics, one that's like focused on poison, one that's uh, focused on lineage factor, one that's focused on Adele fruit, one that's focused on like um, the seraphims. Like we have different multiple Dr. Vegapunks. Like they're like basically clones of each other, but they all like, they, they're like parallel, they can think parallelly. <laughs> like parallel thinking. There's like multiple like minds all thinking, but they're still all together as Dr. Vegapunk is one. 
Maybe. I think the O2 sort of like leans us in a way that is this is not going to be like the just the one Dr. Vega bomb. There's going to be more. So, so I mean, it's really up in the air, honestly. Right? So, or it could be such a, another situation where like, even though it's women, they're, they're a man. You know what I'm saying? Like with uh, Yamato. And maybe like this, like, it could be like Yamato Odin, right? So, like Dr. Vegapunk of old was this great man who studied the lineage factor. And then this is like, oh, I'm studying from, I'll act, I, the dreams never die unless they're forgotten, right? So then I take up the will and the knowledge of what Dr. Vegapunk was back in the day. So it's, it's a lot in the air, you know what I'm saying? Like, and like, she's like playing homage, so always like talking about Dr. Vegapunk. So it could be a situation where it's a daughter, it's a family member, it's split personalities, it's another Odin Yamato situation. Like there's so much that can actually be the answer for this. So we can't really tell until we get the next chapter. I like the idea that it's like parallel thinking, like multiple minds, and they can combine and become one. But the most of the time, they're split and separated, studying different things, so like expand knowledge and stuff like that. But who knows, man? Let's make a broken. Let's make a broken Seraphim, all right? Let's make the most broken Seraphim there is, right? The most, the power they were seeking for the longest time, the Gorb say, was the Nika fruit, not because of because of the potential it had when it was awoken, right? So you can already look at Luffy. You already have made discussions that Luffy's part Lunarian. You can argue it, Lunarian, Shandian, somewhere in that mix, right? But let's say that let's say that they get Luffy's DNA, right? You're gonna mix it with a Lunarian off the bat. So now you have a child Lunarian Luffy already. Right? But you still have Kaido's DNA. You still have Jinbei's DNA. You have I mean you can skip over Boa. You have maybe giving Mihawk sword techniques. Right, we have light beams too. Don't know how it's gonna go with Dolphin string, so I'll just leave that up in the air. You have Kuma and Gekko Moria, right? So say we can't only we can only copy zones. Let's stick strictly zones. So basically, you're, not, you're now giving Lunarian Luffy with the ambitions of Luffy, basically, but still hostile to Luffy. He has he can he can basically not only be Luffy, but also he's gonna have the rubber powers because if he, if Vegapunk's able to copy the Devil Fruit, because it is a zone. Right? You give him Mihawk's sword ability, but then Kaido's durability. Right? And only durability. Plus plus you amp him with like being a fishman too. So now you get Luffy a fishman only fishman fishman only like you basically get a chimera. Like literally like I'm I'm surprised we don't listen, 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 listen. Don't be surprised that we get Luffy. <laughs> this is like she again. But imagine we get a Luffy, right? And it is a basically a chimera Luffy. Because essentially you give him the power of all these zones, right? You give him like Poppy being an Oni fisherman, but you also give him the uh Kaido's Devil Fruit, because Luffy's Devil Fruit basically being a rubber man can probably contain the power that is all the Devil Fruits. That's, that's why Vegapunk would want it, right? And like we were, like, the first time we we learned about multiple Devil Fruits, it's like if you eat two, then you basically explode. You got Blackbeard being a, a black hole. But like if Luffy's rubber body can keep expanding if need be, and if Luffy and Gear Fifth can do that, essentially, so bear with me. So now you have this basically a Lunarian, uh Lunarian rubber boy who has the sword techniques and the durability of an Oni and a fishman, right? And you tack on Kaido's uh, Devil Fruit as well because, because if maybe an Oni, but but Luffy can possibly have multiple Devil Fruit powers, what I'm getting at. But you already have Luffy essentially being able to use his gears and transform into different animals. And this is why I'm saying like a Chimera because Luffy can already transform into different animals as we saw with Snake Man. Tiger Man's probably going to come. But yeah, Battle Man 2 is like imitating uh, King Kong or a gorilla. So you have a dragon tacked on, but also you can be a fisherman. And that sort of negates the fact that, well, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. So if a fisherman, it doesn't. A fisherman, a fisherman needs to die for himself affected by water. But if Dr. Vegapunk is able to take away like the, neg the negative effects of a devil fruit user because it's not really creating, a, it's not really having eaten a devil fruit, it's just having the power of a devil fruit, right? Then you basically have like, a chimera, you know what I'm saying? And the reason, oh, no, 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 no. You see, you see, for a second there, I started going crazy. 
I was gonna say, remember when Shirley, remember when Shirley saw Fishman Allen being destroyed, right? And she saw Luffy. You know what I mean? So she, hear me out. She saw Luffy. Right? But imagine it's not really Luffy, but it's a Sarah from Luffy, right? Hear me out. And if what I was saying just now is true, like Dr. Vegapunk can give Luffy like all these like different powers essentially because he has a rubber body and can contain it all, right? If Dr. Vegapunk has finally like gotten to the level where their food users aren't affected by water, then you have a Chimera Luffy. And the person who actually destroyed Fishman Island wasn't really Luffy, but it was the Seraphim Luffy. Because essentially, Seraphims can be... Seraphims are basically... Uh, the Seraphims are basically controlled by the world government. But hear me out. Hear me out. The loophole is, like, why would why would they send them there to destroy the Fishman Island? Maybe, the, maybe they, they just want to. One, they could like, I don't want this island here anymore. Destroy it. One or two, like I said, uh, when a Nell, when a Nell, um, when a Nell was the god, basically, he said how the Sky Islands were in nat- was like not natural, right? And if Vegapunk can't control the primal urges of Dora Fruits, right? And then you, now you have a dragon, a fishman, an Oni, a Lunarian, basically all in one body. Like, who's going to be, like, the dominant person thinking about the whole thing, right? And maybe, like, someone like Luffy wants to be the most free can act on their own. And essentially, the Fishman Island, they don't want the Fishman Island being down there. They want the Fishman to be with the... Like, Luffy... I don't know, bro. I don't know. Like, Luffy wanted the Fishman to live on land, so he goes to destroy Fishman Island, tell him to come up. I don't know. But essentially, I, I think, like, the person that... The Luffy that may destroy Fishman Island may be, like, a Seraphim Luffy. And the reason why there's no wings being shown is because... uh. Because Luffy thinks like it's a chimera with a rubber body, so he can basically control like what goes in and out of his body. You know what I'm saying? He can like hide the wings or some shit. That's what I just believe. And it makes sense. And you see the fire behind him too, so it makes sense that it could possibly be Lunarian Luffy. Like, come on, guys. Like, think about it. Now Loki, Loki goes together. <laughs> Destroying the red line probably would destroy Fish Mountain. Yeah, but at the same time, it sort of looked like Luffy was like evil. You know, it didn't look like. Yeah, destroying the red line would do it, but at the same time. Eh. That's, that's, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, think about it. Think, think about, think about, right? Think about the, um, think about what just happened, right? We got Sabo being, no, 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 I don't think, I'm not going to go this, I'm not going to go this crazy. I'm not going to go this crazy. I'm not going to go this crazy. I was going to say how they have Sabo's DNA, but they don't, they don't. Forget it, forget I was going to say anything. But they just had Sabo being framed for killing King Cobra, right? So, Give me, like, hear me out a little bit. If they were so easily able to frame Sabo for destroying, um, for destroying, or for killing a king, couldn't they take Sarah from Luffy, right? And make him go, like, the, make him go and, like, handle the fishman, make, make him go to, uh, make him go to Fishman Island and then be, like, Say he destroys Fishman Island, and they're all just going to see it as Luffy destroying Fishman Island, right? Say he goes to Wano, they're just going to see it as Luffy, like, possibly destroying Wano and getting Pluton. Like, say they send Luffy to uh, Alabasta, it's going to be, oh, Luffy did this. It's not going to be, like, it's not going to show, like, say Luffy gets captured Luffy somewhere else. It's going to be Luffy is the person doing all this to everybody, and he can, they can easily frame it that way, right? We just seen Saba get framed, possibly, for killing Cobra, so it could be a situation where we get um, Luffy doing other things, like, just like, just like Sabo. And then the real ones come out later on, and they, you know, I don't know. There's a lot to think about, but at the same time, is Sabo alive? I think Sabo's alive. But at the same time, like, making a star from Luffy, especially one that maybe not have, the, like, not the same skin tone as as um King, because he's rubber, he's able to change, maybe be able to change a little bit. And then you have him going to basically destroy Fishman Island, or him going to Fishman Island to get something. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe you send him to Fishman Island to retrieve the Pontyglyph. You know what I'm saying? Because they find out about the Pontiglyph down there. Because, like I said, Caribou knows everything. And that's why Caribou knowing everything may be, you know, the catalyst to a lot of things. Who knows? Oh, shit. Hold on. Sorry, I just yelled. That makes sense. Hold on. That makes sense. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You have Caribou knowing, not even the Pontiglyph, Poseidon. 